what made to you so special? Nothing. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn. Okay guys, Frank Stout, just a guy from Brooklyn. With the release of the new movie, The First Omen, instead of just giving you a review, I decided to go above and beyond and give you a ranking of all the films, as well as give you my spoiler-free thoughts on The First Omen. If you're a fan of movies about the devil, demons, and all things unholy, back in October, I did a huge 31 movie ranking covering all that spooky stuff. I'm a huge fan of the Omen franchise. It wasn't too tough to rank these movies. It's easy to pick which one is the best, and it's definitely easy to pick which one is the worst. In between, it's a very, very gray area. And then you add this new movie, and I had some mixed feelings on it. So I think it was, it was fun to do this, and it was challenging, you know, to say the least. But let's not waste any more time. I want to get to the movies. So let's cover my rules. Rule number one, spoilers. With the exception of the new movie, I'm going to throw a hard spoiler warning for everything else. These movies are extremely old and I shouldn't have to worry about spoiling anything. Rule number two, as always, this is a favorites list, not a best list. So the best way that you can come back at me is to show me yours. I'd really like to see them in the comments section. Coming in at number six, yup, in last place, we got Omen 4, The Awakening, came out in 1991. I'm not gonna mince words. I am not buying any of the bread this movie is selling. Look, there are tons of really bad movies that I have a lot of fun watching. Some of them are so bad, they are absolutely hilarious to me. They're guilty pleasures. I mean, I love Jaws 4. I can watch Jaws 4 and just have a great time making fun of the movie. But this is so bad, it has zero redeeming qualities whatsoever. It doesn't help that this movie was a made-for-TV movie. It had a small budget and was very limited in what they could show you as far as deaths. Speaking of the deaths, the deaths are laughable, and whoever did the score should be embarrassed. The score feels like the score of like a children's comedy with like horns honking and whatnot. It's bad. Coming in at number five is The Final Conflict, also known as Omen 3, The Final Conflict, came out in 1981. So The Omen goes 80s, and this is a flawed film to be sure, but it does contain some huge memorable moments. A young Sam Neill of Jurassic Park fame plays all grown up Damien Thorne, who's risen to power and is fearful of the coming of, you guessed it, Jesus Christ, who he refers to as the Nazarene. The Vatican has also sent a kill squad armed with those pesky little daggers to try and get him. Because this came out in the 80s, this was actually the first Omen movie I ever saw, and I've probably seen it the most. I got a lot of nostalgia for it. As always with all Omen movies, there's some pretty cool deaths. One involves a baby, which I always found disturbing, but the one that really pops out is Death by Hound Dogs. Release the hounds! They look pretty adorable to me. What are they going to do, smother you with kisses? There's an odd scene where Damien grabs his love interest, Kate, from behind for some extra rough loving. But I always wondered exactly what kind of loving that was. I'm not even a backdoor virgin anymore thanks to Roman. And by the way, that hurts. I couldn't even go to Flags the next day. I had to stay home and sit on a bag of frozen peas. But of course the biggest scene is the ending where Kate stabs Damien with one of the daggers and Jesus himself appears just as Damien is defeated. 
Look, I mean, I don't think there's that many movies where Jesus Christ comes out to save the day. Coming in at number four is the just released The First Omen. This is a two hour prequel that often gave me that, haven't I seen this before feeling? The first hour and a half is basically a non-horror movie with extreme similarities to Immaculate, a movie that just came out on March 22nd. It also doesn't help that this is the fourth nun movie that I've seen in a little less than a year. I am really all nunned out. You follow Sister Margaret, a discount Claire Danes who for some reason at times looks like she's wearing a really bad wig. There's like two or three scenes where she's seen laying down and her hair is in some sort of strange spiral pattern. It's really weird. After arriving in Rome to help the church and take her vows, she makes friends with Luz, a discount Gloria Estefan. Luz dresses her up, takes her to a club, gets her drunk, and sets her up with a guy in true Rumsprinker fashion. And they say nuns don't know how to party. But at the church, you've got good nuns, bad nuns, crazy nuns, and a very troubled nun named Carlita, who's constantly being punished for being naughty and I'm not talking about getting hit in the back of the hand with a ruler. Nuns. No sense of humor. After a young nun with crazy eyes literally recreates a famous scene from the original Omen, Margaret begins to uncover that there's much more going on here. The movie continues to take huge scenes from huge movies, but I must be fair and mention that there is also some new stuff here, some scenes and imagery that really go there to shock you. To get to the third act of the movie, you get a huge famous scene recreated, this time from Rosemary's Baby. And a lot of that third act feels like Rosemary's Baby, the kind of trying to escape and feeling like you're not in control. Rosemary's Baby was all about control. The final 30 minutes saved the movie for me. I really enjoyed it because they connect directly to the beginning of the original Omen. They also take some scenes from the movie Possession and the movie Inside, a French movie. They do say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And there is a kind of surprise scene that really has me feeling optimistic about the franchise. Coming in at number three is the Omen remake, came out in 2006. An unpopular opinion for sure. The argument that's usually made is that there's no point for this movie to even exist. The dialogue is almost identical and the story is the same exact story. I can't argue with any of that and I do wish they went further to give us a remake with something new. It's a missed opportunity, no doubt. And yet, I enjoy watching this one. It's more modern looking, it's shot beautifully, and the performances are strong. Having Rosemary's Baby's Mia Farrow play Mrs. Whitlock was a nice touch, and she is downright creepy. There are some differences. Catherine's death by IV was terrifying, and there's a lot of quick cuts to disturbing imagery that adds to the atmosphere. Julia Stiles does a great job playing Catherine, showing so much emotion as she realizes something is really wrong and she's eventually terrified of her own child. Lee Schreiber is a little wooden, but so was Gregory Peck, to be fair. Coming in at number two is Damien, The Omen 2, came out in 1978. This is nowhere near the level of the original, but a fun entry nonetheless. Damien is in military school and is being raised by his uncle and aunt. And although he doesn't know it, there are people all around him to guide him and protect him so he can fulfill his destiny. As far as story, there's no surprises, there's no twists, but where this movie excels is with its deaths. 
Some are downright brutal, using a crow as a kind of deliverer and or witness of the death is really cool and kind of poetic. You got somebody trapped and drowning in a frozen lake, the crow pecking out a woman's eyes, and my favorite, the elevator scene. And my number one Omen movie is The Omen. Came out in 1976. Was there ever any doubt? It's a classic horror movie done in a very classic fashion. Being raised in a Christian household was a big factor for me as growing up, I wasn't even allowed to watch this movie. So in my mind, it had that mysterious taboo feeling. You go to Sunday school, you have graham crackers and juice. And then you get out and you go hang out with your friends and they tell you about a movie about the Antichrist born to bring about the apocalypse. Obviously, that scared the shit out of me. You fast forward to my teen years and I finally get to watch it and it's even better than I could ever have imagined. Now that I'm a parent, it hits me even harder. The thought of discovering that the child that you raise is the spawn of Satan and the only way to extinguish him is to stab him with seven holy daggers. Could you do it? But hey, us horror fans are here for the deaths, and this one doesn't disappoint. But for me, the real mystery is where the death is coming from. Is it coming from the devil himself? Is it coming from Damien, whether or not he's fully aware of it? And the score is so iconic with the religious chanting and the simple piano keys it sucks you in. What can I say? I've been a huge fan since the first time I laid eyes on it. Well, guys, that wraps things up for this video. As far as the first Omen is concerned, I think if you're a huge Omen fan like I am, I totally recommend you go to theaters and see it. Your experience may be completely different from mine. And if you're just a casual horror fan, I say wait till it streams. Well, this is Frank Stout. Just a guy from Brooklyn signing off. See my face in Peace, baby. Lights, my name on Marquis found down on Broadway. Even if it ain't all it seems, I got a pocket full of dreams, baby. I'm from New York. Concrete jungle with dreams. I'm